peanut butter and jelly. There's nothing better than peanut butter and jelly. Going to eat. Oh. Hi. It's you. I've seen you around here quite a bit. As a matter of fact, I looked through some of the footage when you were walking across the door. You're really quite beautiful. I was able to zoom in on your face. Do you think maybe we could try and get to know each other a little bit? So this is really kind of amazing. It's it's only been two weeks, and I really feel like we've gotten to know each other so well, and we have so much in common. I mean, we both like tofu and Nintendo games <laughs> and and ghosts, and we both like watching Netflix. You know, I don't know if you know this, but there's there's something in our culture called Netflix and chill. I was wondering if maybe we could do that. Okay, 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 we'll, uh, we'll just, we'll just take it slow. It's episode seven. Holy crap. Seven? Wait, no. Like that. We're at seven? Yeah. So, last week we introduced a new member of our Horror Geeks family, Susan Slaughter, and this episode we want to introduce... Our horror geeks kitty. It's Lana the kitty. What's up, Lana? She's gonna be our mascot for the horror geeks from now on. Okay, Lana, good girl. You can go do your thing. Hey, Lana, give me some mice, will you? <laughs> I skipped lunch today. So, Andy, today is National Talk Like a Pirate Day. Yar. Hater. Some notes on this episode. It's a little bit discombobulated, but that's okay because we're doing Asian horror. So this episode, I had to shoot a bunch of things out of order. Andy actually reappeared from his disappearance shortly after we wrapped shooting on the last episode. So we went ahead and did a top 10 with him. Our Chinese horror expert, Vivian Bao, had a scheduling conflict. So I had to shoot her segment yesterday. So everything's kind of weird and out of order, but I'm going to stitch it together. So this is going to kind of be like a Frankenstein episode. I love it. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Patreon update. We're almost 5% to our goal. Yes. I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but thank you guys so much. Chipping away. Chipping away. We keep chipping. Every little bit chipping, helps. Chipping, chipping, chipping. Just like the wood chip massacre. Right. Every um, person who donates, we put your body into the wood chip massacre cool. uh, machine, and it helps us out. It's amazing how that works. And, you know, your legacy is definitely spread out. It is. It's it's spread out over a lawn it's a big or area. a golf course. <laughs> now, I want to give you guys a little heads up. Next week's episode, which we're going to be doing on religion in horror, which should be really interesting, that's going to be our first subscriber-only episode. So, Andy. Yes, Barry? You got taken away again this time you were in the basement so we know that it's not just limited to my closet it's not this time it was a lot more relaxed i got to hang out with the gremlins from gremlins (laughs) (laughs) guys thanks for having me man this movie's hilarious (laughs) oh my god you guys really are the best i mean i knew you were the coolest but now like actually hanging out with you like i know that you're the coolest We just kicked it, man. Hung out in a movie theater. I'm jealous. I'm it was so, so awesome. jealous. They are they are just as fun as as you think. <laughs> I've got some news that I think you're going to be really happy with. I yeah. started dating someone. That's not Charlotte. Not Charlotte. Oh. Things are still off. We're, we've separated. It's done. The streams are not crossed anymore. Now, do you remember in episode two when I showed you that footage of the ghost that was in my apartment? Yeah, I remember that. I mean, of course, how could I forget? It was terrifying. That's my new girlfriend. I just said it was terrifying. You're dating a ghost? Yeah, actually, it's not terrifying. She's So that's the twinkle in your eye every time you talk? It is. That's my twinkle. You're dating a ghost? Yes. She's super cool. We get along so well. Yeah, but how does that work? I mean, how how do you... 
have sex with a ghost? Well, I don't even know if she's corporeal yet. So we haven't got to that point. I haven't even got to first base. Okay. We're taking it really slowly. But how can you get to any base if there's well, not a I don't, corporeal let me, existence to... Let me ask. Like a base is a solid thing. A base is like yeah, a corporeal physical thing. It, it is. So let me ask. Honey, are you there? What do you... What, what do you think about possibly having sex? Fool. She's not alone. Well, the battery's all right. I'll take a look. Hey, well, Andy, I know that you were excited to do this episode on Asian horror. Super pumped. So, I don't usually like to admit that I, I'm understudied in certain areas, but uh, I'm understudied in this one. <laughs> uh, you could probably say I'm a little Eurocentric with my horror. Yeah. Uh, but I, I am... I am Stripping the pride and uh, diving in head first. And you did. You were fun. you were texting me during the week, like, oh my yeah. gosh, this was so good. This was so good. It scared me. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that you got a little Asian education. Yeah, man. In our Asian apparitions episode. <laughs> but you brought up the term Eurocentric, and it's absolutely true, and it's something that I do want to address really quick. You know, when we talk about European horror, we don't really talk about European horror. Right. You know, we talk about French, French, German horror, Italian yeah, horror, right. and we kind of look at those within the different countries. But when we talk about Asian horror, we tend to kind of use this umbrella term. And instead of talking about Japanese horror or Korean horror or Thai horror, we just kind of lump it into its own thing. Shame and we're, we're going to dive into Japanese horror and Korean horror and Thai horror but I just wanted to bring that up and address that. and But, you know, in a way, it makes some sense. Because we are from Western culture. There's a man named Alan Watts. He wrote a pretty famous book. It's really about just a fundamental difference in thinking about things and understanding between East and West. And I think that's part of the fun of analyzing the differences here is we really get into kind of like, if I can use a big word here, Barry, epistemological Ooh. analysis an existential look at horror. Just from kind of my little insight into it, I really noticed how kind of spiritual horror these, these really become. So when we start getting into horror and looking at the differences between Eastern and Western horror, right. I really feel like it does have a lot to do with the difference in looking at religion and in looking at life and death. Culture, Whereas yeah. Western religion centers a lot more on the afterlife and Eastern religion centers a lot more on the here and now. You know, being here, being centered, being present. And so it kind of makes sense that in a lot of... I mean, obviously in Western horror there is a lot of like ghost and afterlife stuff. But a lot less than Eastern horror. And so in Western horror it seems like the horror is here on this in this life. Right. Because the afterlife is okay. And then in Eastern horror, it seems like the horror is after this life because the here and now is okay. Which is more fundamentally scary, I think. I, I do, too. You're dealing with, like, you're, the rest of eternity is a horrible existence. <laughs> yes. It's a terrifying existence. Yes. So because horror and death are so closely related... They are. We need to kind of look at the way that de death is dealt with... Right. In different in different societies and within the difference between East and West. I mean, within China alone, there are dozens of different just death and funerary ceremonies. And that's just China. Right. What In the West, we have two. Well, like, plus the wood chipper. The wood chipper. So we've got two point something. So we've got cremation and being buried in the ground. And if you become a Patreon subscriber. You get tossed in the wood chipper. So when you look at the different um, ways that death is dealt with within the different Asian cultures, I think that that's absolutely reflected in the different horror movies right. that come out of those cultures. Yeah, I mean, we said before in, in past episodes that horror gives us this kind of safe vantage point to look at a very unsafe thing and this yeah. kind of reality that we all, as humans, have to grapple with. Yeah, definitely. So I think you're right. I think if the horror, if anything, will reflect kind of the cultural zeitgeist, if you were... Yeah, and when you look at some of these different Asian cultures, I, I see a, a pretty good separation in how a lot of their horror movies are portrayed. Yes. Like, I mean, across, across Asian horror, a lot of it is supernatural. But like when you look at Japanese horror movies, now obviously there's exceptions to this, 
But it seems like Japanese horror movies deal a lot more on the sort of larger societal level. Yeah, more you macro. Know, it, absolutely. And the individual is just kind of like part of that societal thing. Yeah. I mean, think of like Battle Royale or Suicide Club or Pulse, which Pulse. we're going to talk about yeah. in, in detail a little bit later. To an extent, Ringu and Juan, which we're also going to talk about a little bit later. And even that show uh, that was based on the manga... Uh, Death Note. Death Note, the new one. That just came Netflix. out on Netflix. I mean, that goes to a global level. Yeah. That was one of the biggest um, kind of adjustments I had to make when diving into uh, Asian horror was a lot of the stuff, especially Japanese, the macro. Uh, there was a little bit of like, man, I think I'm, a, I'm not as riveted on the edge of my seat necessarily because I'm used to just like focus on one or two characters and I'm really worried about them. But here you're really worried about humanity about a lot of the time. And then yeah. about the halfway point, I realize that I'm not like classically on the edge of my seat like I'm used to being, but then all of a sudden I'm like, man, this is really in my head. This is really making me think about what it is to be a person. Who am I? I just can't remember. Now, when you start getting into the other cultures, Korean horror has some of the same similar uh, characteristics of Japanese horror, but Korean horror tends to center a lot more just on suffering yeah <laughs> really like the koreans have the suffering done with science man when we move outside of japan and korea and look at hong kong horror because it's it's interesting and i'm going to get into this into the next segment with vivian there's right. not a lot of chinese horror because of the way the government kind yeah. of restricts things right. but hong kong bizarre stuff come, that come out of hong kong but then you kind of get Fair. into Thai horror movies, and this this culture, the Thai culture, I think is really interesting, and we're going to get into Shudder, oh. but Thai horror tends to deal a lot more with just like traditional superstitions, Right. and I, felt, I really felt like, hearkening back to episode four, where we did Tales from the Crypt, yes. a lot of these Thai horror movies are almost morality tales. Right, and you could argue that it's all metaphor for the person's kind of wrongs that they've done, and that... The supernatural is kind of making them atone for those wrongs. Absolutely. I'm so excited right now. I have with us Vivian Bao, mm -hmm. one of the most acclaimed, or in my opinion, one of the most foremost horror experts okay, from China. How's it going? Good, good. Yeah? Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to share my experience. <laughs> Abs uh, yeah. Absolutely. Now tell us a little bit, like, uh, I know Hong Kong mm -hmm. has produced a lot of amazing horror movies. Yeah. Biozombie, Mr. Vampire, a Dreamhouse, Ricky O, how can I forget that? But I know that there's a lot of difference between Hong Kong and mainland China. Can you give our viewers just a little idea about that? Yeah, it's it's a little sad, it's very different because you know we have this very different censorship. Yeah. So actually we can't have real gore or ghost in our horror film. It's can you believe that? <sighs> so uh, for example, if you have a ghost in a film, you can start with that, but at the end you have to end with the revelation that either the ghost is uh is, is presented by some other people. Yeah. Or it's just an illusion. You know, it's it's what? really sad. What kind of horror film that yeah, you well, can't allow where, where's, a ghost? Where's the fun in that? Yeah. So how do so how does someone like you, or how do people in China like get to see? Do they yeah, have to know, smuggle some things out of Hong Kong? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people like me, like they are developing this underground horror community. Ah. In China. Yeah, they're trying to produce. The real horror film. So this is our spotlight on Shudder. So why don't you tell us about three of your favorite movies on Shudder? My first pick will be Hundred Bloody Acres. Hundred Bloody Acres. Yes, yeah, Australian oh horror comedy. You and I are gonna get along so well. <laughs> And that's a movie that I'm really surprised that I bring that up to horror fans, and a lot mm -hmm. of them just don't know about it. Yeah, to me, yeah, that yeah. and the New Zealand production Housebound are like two of my favorite horror comedies yeah, in the yeah, last yeah, you're right. like, five years. It's so brutal, but as well, like, it's so hilarious. It, it's it's totally hilarious. Also the Housebound. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the second one I'm going to mention is uh, Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl. 
it's kind of slow burn and uh, it's a uh, homage for some people maybe it's not as good as uh the devil house of the devil yeah house of the devil <laughs> oh house of the but... devil that's right in my wheelhouse that's one of my mm -hmm. favorite movies of the last 10 15 years but yeah i, I totally agree it, yes. it is a slow burn mm -hmm. like that it is built as an homage film yeah i don't think they pulled it off quite as well as house of the devil yeah but uh, i kind of like it okay i might be stepping outside of my comfort zone okay. but i do speak some chinese oh really yeah 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 oh, sure we, okay. we should we should we should do this third one Okay. In Chinese, oh, and, want... and we'll see we'll see how I do. Okay. Uh, 我最喜欢的第三部电影是 Island, The Island of Death. Oh. 死亡之岛是1974年的影片. Well, I jog a dianxing. Uh, 很多血的电影. 很多血的电影. Ah, oh, 我以为你是vegetarian. Xu, xu. Okay. Vegetarian. 好, 好. How la sue de shi jian dao la? Shi shi vivian ni shi mao tao in. Okay. Yeah, your, your, your Chinese is improved a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've been yeah. working. I've been working really hard. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming and talking to us in our spotlight on Shutter. <laughs> We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Now, I mentioned this a little bit in segment two, but, you know, sort of looking at things in a general sense, most Asian horror is supernatural, but that's not always the case. Definitely like not. Takashi Miike, who is just one of the most prolific film directors, not just horror directors, film right. directors, Miike is just a category All of his own. own. Yeah. And something that I want to show you guys a trailer for, because I don't think a lot of you have seen it, is trailer for The Happiness of the Katakuris. You just got to check this out. なんでこんな死んだ奴らの後しなくばっかり死なきゃいけないんだ。Because we're still talking about Mike, we can't really talk about Japanese horror without talking about Audition. It's really interesting because some people see it as a very pro-female movie, mm. and some people see it as a very anti-female movie. Interesting. Just another way in which I think that horror, cinema, well, let's say art as a whole, and movies specifically, and then definitely horror in ways reminds me a lot of some of the basic principles of quantum physics where like Ooh. two people can look at the exact same thing get those nerds heisenberg principle nerd! but also schrodinger's cat nerd! now in audition there's a bag there's, there's a, a guy bag. in the bag <laughs> there's a guy in the bag spoiler there's Hello. a guy in the bag sorry Ringu. Ringu. There was obviously the American remake with Naomi Watts. One of the few remakes, American remakes, that I actually like better than the original, but I cannot downplay the influence of Ringu. It started the American obsession with Asian horror movies. Right. And then started the Hollywood obsession with remaking Asian, Asian horror movies. movies. And then I actually... And then honestly, the Hollywood obsession with making sequels to the remakes of Asian Sequels to the remakes of horror movies. But then also, I feel like it really started the, what I refer to sometimes as the supernatural surge in American horror. 
So we can't talk about Ringu without talking about Zhuan. Zhuan, the which grudge. Which was remade as The Grudge right. in America. Zhuan is the scariest movie I have ever seen. Wow. It scared the bejesus really? out that, of me. You're really going to give it that? Yes. I that mean, seal? it's my personal... That's a big deal. I'm not saying it's the scariest movie ever. I'm saying... No, no, no. But I'm for saying... For me, yeah. it's the scariest movie I've That's ever seen. That's high praise, my friend. What I like so much about it, it took place in kind of this, like, suburbia. Yeah. And now when you think a lot of these Japanese movies, you think Tokyo, you think kind of bigger cities, urban environments... And I like kind of getting into just suburbia. Freddy Krueger used to come through as there are dreams. Right. The pulse that comes out comes, through comes out the, the internet. internet. The ghosts and the people that were still alive were kind of one and the same. And I think that's what the movie was talking about, how the internet is this kind of vast void landscape. Yeah. That we're all kind of sucked into this cyber oblivion. And now the ghosts are coming literally through the oblivion at us. You know, we all sit in front of our computers and we look at this void of this, this limitlessness and they focus so much on the loneliness of, of the afterlife. Speaking of feeling lonely and isolated, I'd like to transition to the only Korean film that we're going to talk about, A Tale of Two Sisters, which is probably in my top three favorite Asian horror movies. So good. I'm not going to go into it too much because unfortunately we got to move on, but this movie is so beautifully shot. you got to check it out, Tale of Two Sisters. Now, Andy mentioned a movie a little bit ago that I know he and I both really really like it's a thai film it's called shutter joshua jackson starred in the american remake the guy from the skulls yes definitely Uh the guy from the skulls the thai version is terrifying it's terrifying but what really set this movie apart to me was the main character was a wayward no good doer yeah no do good Nowhere, no, nowhere do gooder and like we said with tales from the crypt like this kind of morality play of like yeah. this guy did something awful and then i love the ruse of it being about an accident You're like oh because they had some crazy accident like the ghost of the person they hit yeah but what's so brilliant about that is they they hit the woman and then what does the guy want to do the very guy you're following he wants to drive away and that's what they do they, they hit and yeah. run so anyway my it's just neck, a brutal my, my neck is really sore <laughs> Now, another movie that starred a, a character who didn't deserve what she got is The Eye, which is a Hong Kong film directed by, uh, or made by the Pang brothers. This woman, this poor woman, she's yeah. been blind since she was two. She gets an eye transplant, and she ends up getting the eyes of, like, this evil witch. <laughs> and starts seeing ghosts, and, man, you just feel so bad Talk about bad her. luck. That is really bad luck. The last film that I want to touch on is the anthology film, Three Extremes. Oh, man. The Korean one is about a disgruntled background actor who puts the director in this really bad situation. My favorite out of the three is Mike's uh, box. Takashi Mike is just a brilliant filmmaker. He's, he's so good. My absolute favorite favorite is dumplings the sound design in this is is just phenomenal i have to say the witch is hot now Gemma arterton is the hottest witch hunter i've ever seen but the witch she's super hot and now the top ten andy What's You're up? doing the top ten today. I'm doing a top ten. It's my first one. I know. And because I was going to have you in the top ten last episode, but you disappeared again. But we already Sorry. talked about that. I'm actually kind of jealous because you had that amazing time with the gremlins in the movie theater. It was pretty fun. So let's dive into your top ten. We are right, doing right. what? We're doing paranormal films. So let's 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 go into it. What's, All right. What's your number ten? Well, my slot ten, and I was a little nervous this might be walking the line between horror and comedy, which it does very well. It's just the Frighteners, Peter Jackson classic, nineteen ninety six, Michael J. Fox. It was just such a great movie that really walked the line between action, horror, comedy. It really had a bit of everything. It's got Jeffrey Combs. It's got Jeffrey Combs as the bad guy. He's amazing. Like you can't get any better than that. He's amazing. We go on. We go on. And uh, it's produced by one of our dear friends, Rich King. We go on is about a guy who just can't deal with the idea that we don't go on. So he therefore puts an ad in the paper for an exorbitant amount of money to say, produce proof. It really probes into the kind of like, enjoy here, enjoy now. Eight would be The Conjuring. What I like about it, 
is just it simplifies it to a family it makes it real it makes it personal and it keeps a lot off the camera again and kind of plays back into some of the older style of some of the classics the legend of hell house which Ooh. i saw at a church lock-in uh, in 97 we have roddy mcdowell of, roddy uh, mcdowell fright of... night fame uh i was thinking cutting class cutting glass the 1989 slasher film with Jill Sholin, Brad Pitt's first feature film. I thought that was Thelma and Louise. Wrong! 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 Right? Wrong! Insidious. Ooh. Another James Wan. And this really, for me, was the first time in a long time where I went to the movies and was really terrified and really into it. He also did this in The Conjuring about like demons and ghosts latching onto a person. And I just think that is utterly takes it to the next level of terror because... You can't leave the house because it doesn't matter. The Haunting. The Haunting. And I saw it at the very same church lock-in in 1997. What kind of church did you go to? I was a Unitarian Universalist, and they're super cool, and they're super liberal, and my mom's a minister. The shots of the house, just with the backdrop of this guy, even during the day, it's just showcasing the creep of this house, and it makes it into this character, this true character. What Lies Beneath. Nice little New England Yeah, a little New thriller. England little, um, uh, little Han Solo and Catwoman Little Han Solo and Catwoman action Robert Zemeckis, one of my favorite directors We talked about him uh, with the Tales from the Crypt episode Seeing Harrison Ford as the bad guy is a treat and Yeah, that twist, it's kind of like Oh, Han Solo, you can't be the bad guy Betrayed us My number three is Stir of Echoes ah, Little Kevin Bacon So, Richard Matheson, who actually wrote the Hell House novel wrote Stir of Echoes back in the day. The thing in that movie that just is burned in my head is Jennifer Morrison's character, her fingernail getting ripped off. Oh. I cannot do fingernails getting ripped yeah. off. I can't oh. do it. Poltergeist. Obviously got to mention this in Paranormal Lists. First movie we watched that night in the 1997 church lock-in. Same lock-in. <laughs> we watched three films. Poltergeist, Hell House, and Haunting. This movie was the first time I saw it. 1997, utterly scared the crap out of me. And then finally, The Shining. Still my favorite horror film, utterly terrifying. Watched it again the other night for the 50 billionth time, and I said, oh my god, I'm going to kill it. It's not going to be scary anymore. And guess what? It was terrifying. And I don't even know why most of the time. It doesn't really use tropes. It doesn't really use kind of the traditional pop-outs. The movie really gets into your psyche and lays eggs, lays raptor eggs. Proceed. So that was past Andy, but now present Andy, unfortunately, along with present Barry, has to say goodbye. It's true. It's that time. It's the saddest it's part the time of time we all hate. I hate it. Now you are going to go home. I don't, I hope you don't have any neck pain. I hope you don't hear any strange things in the elevator. I hope you don't see any weird videos on your computer, and I hope that your brother is actually alive and not someone that you killed five years ago and you're just seeing a version of him. So I want you to think about all these things as you go home. Wow, okay, that's, that's pretty heavy. That's a lot to drop on me right now, Barry. Thanks. I like, I like dropping things. You are. You're a big dropper. Yeah, I, I do like to drop things. And speaking of dropping, as we said in the beginning of this episode, the next episode will only be dropping on Patreon. <whistles> who, is, who is that? Tweet from... Oh no, it's Charlotte. No. 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 Cut things off with Charlotte. Did you? Because she it's... says she wants to get back together. Oh my god. No. Oh. No. Honey... Honey, this is... Th no, honey? No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll take care of this. I'll take care I'll of make this. Sure, I'll make sure he doesn't do anything about it. I mean, she's my friend, he's my friend. I really don't want them together. Oh my God. Sweetie, sweetie. There's a ghost in your house. You really are dating a ghost.
私はネランこの夏は世界に羽ばたくニョだハローアニュハセヨトマンタレプーんナナミナニョだ世界のホテル予約も海外